All right, so to pin our bug, we obviously need a bug. I have here a black horsefly. I believe this species is Tabanus atratus. Um, it's a pretty big fly, don't let it bite you. Uh, there's its mouth parts. And look at those beautiful eyes. I love horsefly eyes. All right, and then besides the bug, we also need our pins. I'm using size three insect pins. You can't use like a regular pin that you buy at like Walmart. You want an insect pen so it does not rust and kind of fall apart on your bug. Because pinned insect specimens can last hundreds of years if they're properly cared for. Okay, so I have my pen here and I'm going to grab my pen. I'm going to grab my bug and let's go ahead and insert the pen. Now we all know insects have three parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. But also these parts have their own subdivisions. So the thorax also comes in three parts. There's a prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax. Uh, the mesothorax is the middle section, and that's where you want to put the pin. And it's really easy to find these sections uh, because uh, each pair of legs is, is on its own section. So the middle thorax section has the middle pair of legs and the first pair of wings. Uh, so flies really have this first true pair of wings, so that's very easy to find. I'm going to hold my bug. I'm going to insert the pin. I'm not going to go in the center. I'm going to go off center a little bit. I'm going to stick it in just a little bit. So you can see I can still kind of wiggle the pin around. Now I'm going to look at the bug uh, both kind of front ways, sideways. I want to make sure the pin is going in the correct way before I push it all the way through. So once I'm pretty happy with that, I'll just push gently. Now I have my thumb underneath, so I'm pushing gently. Once I can feel that poking my thumb, I know the pin is through. You can see it poking out down there. And now I'm going to just make sure the legs are more or less how I want them. I'm going to pin this down into my styrofoam. So I'll insert the pin. And you do want a little bit of space at the top. We have to remember on the insect, there'll be two labels. It'll be the label where you found it, and then a second label with the species information. Uh, so this, we could push in a little bit more. Uh, my foam is not very thick. So I just wanna make sure I'm not getting through to the table. All right, so the next step of the process is to brace the insect. Uh, it's going to sit here for roughly a week. Bigger bugs take longer, smaller bugs dry out quicker but anything that can move while it's drying could potentially move. So I'm just gonna set in a few brace pins just to help hold everything in place. But the reason why I want to keep the legs under the body is because if they're sticking out, they're more likely to be broken off. Now, since we already know what species this fly is, that's not as big of a deal, but it's an unknown species. You never know if the legs will be important to identifying it. I'll just stick a couple over the wings to help hold them down, keep them from going up. You can use as many or as few brace pins as you want. Uh, some people actually don't use any. Let's take a look. See the legs are more or less underneath the body. Let's fix this. Oh. This little one a little bit. You see that foot sticking out. Another claws like to grab onto the foam. There we go. All right, so that's more or less good. As it moves around, you can just kind of adjust the pins you've put into place. And just make sure your bug is looking pretty nice. Nothing sticking out too far. And you're good to go. Now you just let it dry out for about a week and then you pull out the brace pins and you are done. That is how you pin a horsefly.